Hello, hi, and welcome to Empathic Fire. I am your reader, Jay. These are going to be general messages for the sign of Libra in the month of July 2019. What's going on, Libra? How are you guys doing? I hope you guys are doing well. Uh, one second, hold on. Sorry, I had to turn down the music. I just realized I left it on a higher volume. All right, Libra, what's going on? I hope you guys are doing well. Uh, let's see. Well, happy belated even though you don't say this, but happy belated 4th of July for those who were here in the States celebrating or abroad celebrating wherever you were. Uh, if you were having a good time, uh, I hope you were thinking of me. No, I'm kidding. Uh, but I did hope that you guys were uh, having a good, safe holiday if you did celebrate here in the States or anywhere in the world. And uh, if not, for my international viewers, happy July, I guess. <laughs> anyway, Libra, shuffled off camera. That's your main spread there. What I will do now is shuffle on camera for your outcome and your overall energy. Once all of the cards are out and they're lying face up on the table, that's when the reading begins. You can find a timestamp in the description box below if you want to jump ahead. That's totally cool. That's why it's there. It's for you to use it. <laughs> uh, also down there is all the information you need if you want to get a personal reading with me. Uh, you just simply email me, let me know what type of reading you want, and we move on from there. Once uh, payment is received, there's a 24 to 72 hour uh, turnaround right now. Uh, but if you have any questions about anything that you read down there, if it's not clear, if you want to, you know, clear something up, you can easily email me at the same address and I will answer your question as well, okay? And, uh, all right. Oh, yeah, and before we get started, please make sure that you like, share, subscribe, and comment and do all that fun stuff that YouTube allows you to do. Helps the channel grow. I've seen tremendous growth with the channel for the past two to three months. It's been phenomenal, and I want to see that keep going and keep progressing. So if you want to help a girl out, doing any and all of those things is totally going to help me towards my goals, okay? All right, Libra, let's get into it. I want to see Libra's outcome for July 2019. I want to see Libra's outcome for July 2019. Please show me. Boom. Bottom of the deck is the overall energy. Oh, Crystal, you got pushed out of the way. Oh, look at that. Only one card came face down. It's a mystery. Let's find out what it is, huh? Hello. Big baller. Big player there. Or maybe not. We'll see how it, we'll see how it all plays out together, okay? All right, Libra, let's get into it. Please show me where Libra is in July 2019. Please show me Libra in July 2019. Please show me. Okay, wow. Boom, that was pretty good. Uh, so, here we go. Nice and nice and direct, I like that. All right, Libra, coming into the reading, you come in with the King of Swords. So, uh, before we actually get into that, I need to make an announcement or kind of clarify something to maybe some new viewers. What we have here on the board is, we're starting in the triplet, what I call the triplet. I intend to lay six card spreads, but as you can see, there's seven cards out on the table, aside from the overall and the outcome. So a triplet happens when you get two cards in one position, they make a triangular shape, and it usually tells a story that is separate from the other four cards on the table, or it supplements and complements what is going on in the four cards, etc., etc. Now. The interesting thing about triplets is, number one, I'm thinking they're coming more often when there's a Mercury retrograde. I'd have to go back and check all my videos or check when these things have come out more frequently. But I think they come out when the Mercury retrograde happens. Uh, and the other thing interesting about the triplets, Libra, is that I don't normally, when they're here, I don't normally start with them. I usually start with the four and then we move into the triplet. So occasionally we start in the triplet. So that's sometimes significant because I, I don't know. I just feel like it's separate or supplemental to the four. So it's always interesting that we start in the three, at least to me as the reader, it's interesting. Now, here goes <laughs> King of Swords. So air sign, energy, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius, your own home turf, so to speak. So you might be acting in your own power or acting in your own quality right and the king of swords is known to be a decisive character known to be a very intellectual character known to be somebody who you know has a plan has a idea or just always has input maybe doesn't speak a whole lot but certainly would have two cents to throw at a situation if necessary i don't get like a lot of talking with the king of swords 
even though he, and I'm saying he only because it's a king, you can be a female and, and be embodying this energy, so don't take the gender to heart here. But I don't get someone who's very talkative. I don't get someone who's very social right now. Like, much like this, this card is depicting, I'm sure many of us have had the experience of going to a barbecue and, like, you know, the cousins are playing over here, the kids are, you know, playing by the pool or playing in the sandbox or whatever, and the women are congregating in the in the kitchen, putting out the salads and the drinks, and there's, like, that one guy or, like, that couple of guys that just, like, stands by the grill and doesn't really socialize at all, all night. You know? And I'm not trying to say, like, that is exactly what you're experiencing, but, like, it's that thing where you can be in a social gathering, but you're not really doing a, a lot of talking. Maybe you're doing a lot of observing. Maybe you're just talking to a select group of people, like having a lot of side conversations, but there isn't like a life of the party energy when it comes to this King of Swords. Now that might literally be going on for you guys if you're going out to barbecues during the summer or you, like I said, at the top, maybe you were having a celebration over the 4th of July and you weren't necessarily antisocial, but you weren't just like the center of attention. And the King of Swords wouldn't aim to be that because I think he is more reserved and he gets a lot out of, you know, sort of looking at how other people are getting along. In some ways, like this, me mentioning this is like giving me like a power play or like a, an upper hand kind of feel. So in a social situation for you, Libra, it might benefit you to kind of zip it and just listen more than talk or just, you know, take in your surroundings, take in what people are talking about around you and utilize that to your advantage somehow. Or you might just not have much to contribute. Like you could, but it's not going to go anywhere. Like sometimes that happens in a social situation. You know, parties, work, it doesn't matter where. Where you could say something, but you know that your opinion or you know what you're going to discuss with people isn't really going to get you anywhere. Or it's not going to further the dialogue. Like... Like, I'm not, I don't feel this specifically, but just as an example, sometimes, you know, and most of us know, like, you're taught, like, basic etiquette. There are, like, two main things you don't talk about. I think there's a third thing, but there are two main things you don't talk about in mixed company. Religion and politics, you know? Now, I'm not saying that is exactly what you're dealing with, but it has that tone to it. It's like, it's such a potentially sensitive topic for people or potentially divisive, uh, depending on where you live, depending on who you're, you're, you're socializing with, that it's not going to behoove you to, to, to interject your opinion. So as much as you might have something to say, as much as you might be really informed on a specific subject or, or, or anything like that, I just don't feel you're in the mood to talk about it or it would really be beneficial if you did talk about it. You know, stoicism is the name of the game right now. Manning the barbecue, you know, just having a little sideline conversation is really more fitting in this energy. Which is very interesting because it's like... Uh, I don't think that the King of Swords... Well, I suppose when you compare the King of Swords to the Queen of Swords, the King of Swords is probably a lot more docile than the Queen of Swords. Like this particular pairing or in this particular suit, the sword suit, the queen is often known to be more the the mouthy one <laughs> than the king of swords, you know? And, and maybe that's true for all the kings. Maybe not the king of wands. The king of wands might be a little boisterous. But uh, I like this for you, Libra, because, you know, your your natural inclination is to be a diplomat, is to be someone who aims to have a group of people get along or ho hopefully you know, keep a copacetic air in a, in a particular setting. So I don't see you deviating from that archetype of yours. You know, if you know at the barbecue, Uncle Louie's going to show up and Uncle Louie has a certain way about him and it's just like, I don't want to get involved. And if I see my cousins kind of engaging, I'll step in and be like, hey, cuz, come over here. Hey, come, come have a, come have a beer with me. You know, I could see it being that way where you're kind of trying to trying to diffuse something before it gets off before it like goes off the rails does that make sense <laughs> uh 
so yeah, I kind of like that for you. So, and that's an interesting position to come in because, you know, the, 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 the energy behind this is also kind of like selfless. Like you're not in a position of putting yourself first. You're really in a position of making sure everybody else has a good time or making sure everybody else gets along. And, you know, your personal investment in the situation is minimized. You're really like trying to be like, I don't really have a dog in this fight. I just want to see everybody have a, a nice day today. You know, so again, that could be at a party, could be at work, could be within a family dynamic without a party going on, without anything to celebrate. But you're just really like, let's all just chill out, have a good time. Yeah. Now, that kind of makes sense. I don't know what that would mean, though. So above you, hmm. You've got the Hermit in reverse and the Three of Pentacles. Hermit card, Major Arcana for Virgo. So you might be dealing with a Virgo, but you don't have to. Uh, and the Three of Pentacles right next door. So uh, a Hermit usually talks about, you know, someone who's spending time alone or reflecting. They don't have to be alone when you're reflecting. You can be very much on a spiritual journey, on a, on a personal <laughs> uh, improvement journey. And you could be surrounded by a million people. It's, 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 it's not the, the, the word hermit does not necessarily mean you are acting like a hermit. Okay. Um, but, and the, I don't know that this is you it's above where you start. So this is in your consciousness it's in your mind. So it could be another person, whoever, uh, would be representing this energy, but there is perhaps a coming out. Ooh. Okay. Because with the hermit in reverse, we're not doing that internal work or we're not, being so reserved or we're not being so reflective we're avoiding that or we're done doing that work is what i'm getting it's either someone is avoiding going deep and spending time by themselves or or, or really reflecting on whatever's going on in their life the actions that they're taking etc etc right you're either avoiding that or it's already finished or yeah it's it's mostly that it's either complete or it has yet to begin Okay. And combined with that three of pentacles, there's a helping hand here. Huh. <laughs> and look at the hands on the woman helping hand. Right. So those hands are tools and she's being, there's something here where in your consciousness, Libra, this could be for yourself. You know, some of you, this will be a self-contained energy. This will be energy that resides in you. But I feel it's mostly an external person where they, they're they coming out of their shell. Or when I first used the term come out, maybe they literally have come out. They've recently come out as gay or as trans, as non-binary, whatever, whatever way they have come out. There could be someone around you who has done this and they are in need of a helping hand. And there you are at the barbecue. You know, you know, your cousin's coming in to this barbecue. This is just, this is a very specific example, but it might apply to a few of you. You, you have a friend or a family member who's coming to this barbecue, who's coming to this family gathering, who's doing whatever. And you know, they've recently come out and they're finally going to present themselves in their new form or as themselves. So they're coming and they're bringing their boyfriend and they're debuting as a couple, as a gay couple, or they're coming to the barbecue and they're coming as their true self, as, as the woman that they were born as, even though they were, you know, born a male, maybe now they're transitioning into being a female. You see what I mean? And so that person, either after having a long time of reflection or yeah, just like coming out of this quiet period by themselves, they need some type of help or assistance. Now, that's a very specific um, example, and it kind of fits because June was Pride Month, so that could mean something here for, for a few of you. Could be you. This could be your own energy. You might be coming out. You might be debuting as whoever you are. You know, as, as whomever you've always felt you were on the inside. You see what I mean? Uh, and in a family setting, and I and it can be friends. It doesn't always have to be just family. But people that you care about, this debut. 
I mean, I feel that from you, Libra. It's like a protective thing. Or like, if it's not protection, it's just ensuring that that person or that everybody involved stays calm. Nobody gets riled up. Nobody gets their feathers in a, in a or their panties in a twist. You know, everybody just chills the fuck out, right? Is, is basically what I feel your action is. And if this is your own energy contained within all three cards, that's what you're hoping when you walk into that event. I don't want my presence here to stir up any drama. I just want to come, enjoy a good burger, chill out, tan a little bit, maybe do, a, you know, hang out by the pool. You don't want anything to, you know, be an issue. Anything else, because that's super specific, but I think it can apply in many ways. Because so, coming out, you know, is mainly used for the LGBTQ community, right? But coming out can be another thing. You know what I mean? You could be coming out of rehab, something like that. You could be coming out of a divorce, a very nasty divorce, and you're coming back into the family circle, something like that. You could be coming out of service. You could be coming home from doing service or tour abroad, whatever. There's a lot of ways that there's this coming back to is more, I guess, the appropriate phrase to kind of make it more, make it broader for everybody. Coming back to something with this Hermit card reverse. Yeah. And support is needed. That Three of Pentacles. Somebody needs a helping hand. Somebody needs that reassurance that everything is okay, that nothing has changed. We still love you. We still support you or you're welcome here. Maybe it's the first time that someone is coming there. You know, maybe this is like a long lost relative who, you know, was adopted out at birth or given up at birth. You know, all those kinds of reunion. Because that's also kind of there a little bit with Three of Pentacles is things coming back together in a union way. Like the pieces that were splintered off now get to come back together. So it could go many different ways, but in general, I feel it's a good energy. I mean, I'm not feeling hostility. I'm not feeling, I feel the potential that it could ruffle people's feathers. But if someone like you is there, or there are several people who share your energy of let's all just have a good, a good day today. Let's all just have a good time and get along. I don't really see whatever specific situation this is, whatever specific time that this is, that it's going to rock the boat too much okay that's nice i like that anything else there like if this isn't other people and you're protecting other people and if this isn't your own coming out story i do feel for some of you libras you're coming back into a fold that you've been away from, maybe a state of being, you know, maybe people aren't used to you in this quiet, reserved, reflective energy. And so that could be a new way that you're sort of coming out or, or coming uh, into a situation. So just as a general thing, people might be used to you being the life of the party, being the center of attention, or being somebody who is readily engaged while drinking, while out at the bar, while, you know, at the cookout, whatever it is. And now you're just like kind of sitting back in the cut and being like, ah, oh, you know, just sitting and just like chilling and not really interacting. And so that might be a little strange and you might need support in that because people might be, you know, whispering around at the party, like, Hey, what's going on with Libra? Like Libra's being really quiet. What's wrong with him? What's wrong with her? And, you know, somebody else might need to step up on your behalf and be like, ah, you know, Libra's just chilling or Libra's going through a thing or, you know, Libra's, some people, <laughs> maybe you're like, this is like so far fetched, but maybe this is something that you've done where you've recently taken a vow of silence. Maybe you've recently converted into a different religion or certain spiritual practices that requires you to reserve your energy. So yeah, I'm going to come to the party to show my support or show you know, that I'm still a member of this family or whatever, but I'm really just like going to have sort of like a vow of silence. Now that's an extreme case or an extreme example, but it could be something like that where something in your personality has changed a bit and people are having a little, a bit of a hard time understanding why or understanding 
it just you're a different person perhaps in their eyes and they're just like huh who is that and, and somebody steps in for you and it's just like don't worry about Libra Libra's cool she's just chilling over there by herself she's fine you okay so interesting now what's going on in the four cards for you oh children yeah okay so we've got a situation a family situation or and family can be anything you know your biological family your extended family your 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 immediate family could be your chosen family of friends and co-workers and whoever else uh but whatever is going on something in the foundation there's like a there's like a chapter turn going on here there's a there's a leveling up here we we're putting certain things to rest yeah wait, whoa wait sorry Yeah, okay, thank you. <laughs> because they're like, wait! <laughs> so we're putting certain things to rest with the world card. Uh, Major Arcana card, uh, ruled by Saturn, so associated with Capricorn, but more readily this card is associated with the fixed signs of uh, Taurus, Leo, Scorpio, and Aquarius. So you could be dealing with any of those signs, but you guys know the rules, you don't have to be. It's really more about what's going on energetically here and what's depicted on the card. And like I said, what do we have? We have this depict we have several depictions of a family or family dynamics and things that we think of traditionally uh, in the West and in, and in the East. Why am I saying only in the West? But across the world, this is what we think of when we think of family a lot of times. And the fact that the pictures, the cards are coming out of a recipe box, like traditional things, things that lineage, right? You know, great grandma's, you know, baked bean casserole. That is, that is not a thing, but you know, just like you might be finding these things around your house. You might be going to a relative's house, cleaning it out. You're finding old memorabilia and, 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 and old photo albums and things like that. And you're like reflecting on this thing. You know, we talked a lot about that here too, reflecting, reflecting. And it's a little bit here too with the world card. Uh, but whatever's long standing historically in your family, again, whatever that means to you, family means a lot of different things to different people, right? So whatever has been a historical thing for your family is shifting over into something else because we've kind of gotten to the brink of the old guard or the old ways or the traditional ways. And you know, we're, we've been long into this new millennia We've been long into this new century. We are long into uh, this next decade, you know. Time progresses and as things progress, things need to change. And that's really innate in the world card. It's about life lessons. It's about chapters ending, moving from one phase of your life to another phase of your life. And I feel that is significant for many of you. And that's gonna come across in many different ways. You know, some of you, pick it back up, thank you. Some of you, you're having children for the first time. We've got the, we've got the, the baby carriage there. We've got the people standing on the world. We've got the car and the suburban household. So some of you, that might, this might be, you know, you're newly married or like I said, you're, you're new parents or something like that. And so now I'm no longer single. I'm no longer a bachelor. I'm no longer a bachelorette. I'm now married. This is my first kid and I'm 34 years old or I'm 26 years old. It doesn't matter. And there's an unknowingness to it. And, right, as we move forward in our lives, as we become new parents, new homeowners, newly, newlyweds, maybe you're moving somewhere, world can talk about travel, so maybe you've never lived on the West Coast before, or you've never lived abroad, or anything like that. It, it, it can go anyway, guys, it's a general reading. This newness will in some ways ultimately be informed by your past. You know, so you go as you're getting to pack your things to move to your new home or, you know, like this happens all the time with kids. Oh, oh I, we still have our baby clothes. We still have little Jackson's clothes from when he was first born. We can give it to you. So like it's this inheritance of objects or this inheritance of knowledge from previous generations that is still useful but ultimately 
this time for you, Libra, is about, I don't want to say recycling, but reinventing. Thank you. Reinventing what you already know, what you already have, and turning it into your own thing, your own new traditions, your own new values, value system, your own way of raising children, of, of, of making a happy home, etc., etc. And that comes ultimately in the form of a life lesson. Yeah, you take some of the lessons you learned from when you were a kid, you've watched your friends or your other family members raise their kids, or what was it like when you guys first bought your home? Oh, don't forget to get this insurance because when, you know, the flood happened, we lost blah, blah, blah. And so you're listening to other people, you're observing other people's experiences, and you're taking snippets from everybody and you're utilizing that information to your benefit. Okay. And you're growing with it. And it's interesting because, like, it's, the thing about the world card in combination with the Ten of Pentacles, which is where we're about to go in two seconds, we accumulate, we get to this point of accumulation and then we fold over or we, or we boil over or we turn over to a new thing and then we begin to accumulate again. That's what life is, cycles, right? So with these two in combination, you're completing a cycle just so you can start another one. So right next door is this Ten of Pentacles. Ten of Pentacles. <sighs> Legacy, family traditions, her <laughs> heritage, I was going to say hereditary, heritage, right? Can talk also about inheritances and, and money along family lines, along generational lines, how much you inherit from your parents and their parents and so on and so forth. Uh, but also in modern times, we can talk about insurance policies and things like that. Um, so that's there, but I think this is more the focal point because I think... You know, Libra, I feel you're in this, like I just said, this this space of reinventing or redefining and reestablishing your own traditions, your own foundations, your own uh, heritage. And maybe some of you are discovering for the first time your heritage. I did mention, I forget where it was, but there was, I, I did use the word adoption. So maybe some of you have an adoption story within your family. And now that kind of challenges you and your other relatives to sort of reconsider or restructure what your family dynamic looks like you know you might be inviting in a brother or a sister that you never knew you had and so now it's like you don't want them to feel ostracized you want them to feel as though they're part of the family or you are the 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 child that was you know given up for adoption at birth and now you're reunited with your adult siblings and it's just like this whole new venture this whole new journey that you have to take okay um so I hope you get what I'm saying here, where it's like, we've come to the brink, we've come to like the stopping point of one experience or one phase, and then we immediately start to fill up and compile into the next phase, because that's what life is, it's cycles. So the 10 is a completion point, the world, that's the completion of the tarot, that's the end of the tarot, you jump back down, and you get to... Uh, you go back to the Fool in terms of Major Arcana, right? You go right back to the Fool energy, 21 back down to zero, right? <sighs> hmm. And it feels seamless, you know? It doesn't feel like there's a notable stopping point for you or for whoever's involved here. It feels really like organic and I don't like using that word I think it's kind of hokey sometimes but it does it really feels very natural that we move along in this way that we embrace this new relative that we that we've never known or we embrace the relative that was gone away because they were at rehab or they were elsewhere you know doing you know maybe they like I said before they were in the service or they've worked abroad or whatever or we accept the new family member who you know we had our brother James and now we have our sister Jane and we kind of have to embrace this new person who is familiar enough to us but is in fact going to be a new person to us in some ways. And there will be times where there's going to be struggle and there's going to be this recalibration period moving from one phase to the next for you, for them, for everybody involved. There will be that stumbling block moment but 
because these are coming together, it's like it is going to happen. Number one, the world, you cannot stop the pressure of the world. You cannot stop the progression of the world, not the pressure, excuse me, the progression of the world. And pentacles also can deal with time and you can't stop time either. And, and uh, the whole thing is, it's going to work out and it's going to be just adopted. I hate to use that word again, but whatever new things that you're implementing or the new things that are being introduced into your life, Libra, they will be adopted in time. They will be taken on, they will be adapted to, they will be, people will just get used to it. So that's for the people, and this could be for some of you who are a little resistant. You know, Uncle Louie, who, who once he has a drink too many, he's, his mouth is liable to say anything. Uncle Louie eventually will get on board too. And if he doesn't, he'll be left in the dust. Because I feel collectively, whoever your family is, whoever those people are that you consider close to you to be family, most are going to be on board with the program. Oh, well, this is the new normal. Or this is the new tradition. These are the new ways that we're communicating in this group of people. These are the new things that we're doing uh, as a tradition, okay? So we used to have Sunday dinners at Grandma's house. Now we're going to do Saturday brunches or something like that, you know? Uncle Louie, oh, we should have Sunday dinner, you know, a good pot roast and a good this and that. And it's like, okay, Uncle Louie, we don't have time for that because people work on Monday. So we just don't have time. It's better to do it Sunday brunch. That way, we, you know, and it's just the reasoning is there and most people agree. Those who don't agree, you either get with the program or you stay left behind. And that's not a threat. It's, an, it's just the condition. It's just the way it's going to be because you cannot stop the progression of the world or the progression of time. You just can't. You have to adapt to the new normal. Okay. <sighs> so in the foundation here, what's going on? So we've got some kids. So again, some of you, new parents, right? Or children are a focal point here. You know, some of you are moving because of your children. You want to give them better opportunities. So maybe some of you are leaving uh, a city life and you're moving into the suburbs. Or maybe you're leaving the rural life where maybe you've got underfunded school districts and you're going towards a more suburban area so that your children have better opportunities education-wise. There's all kinds of reasons, but someone is definitely moving because of their kids and, and, and prioritizing the children because, yes, there's, there's a need to nurture here. Page of Cups, Water Sign Energy, Cancer, uh, Scorpio, or Pisces, uh, and being that it's a page, you could have a child who is a water sign who is significant to you. If it's not your own child, it could be a cousin or a niece or a nephew, it doesn't matter, but it's more about what we see here where... You've got this page of cups earnestly trying their best to nurture and take care of those sunflowers or just flowers in general, right? And you know how kids like to help around the house. Let me do it. I want to do it. Da, da, da. I don't hang around kids a lot, but I know they talk like that. <laughs> and I know, you know, having been a child myself at some times, you want to be a part of the, 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 the adult thing. So the kids go into the kitchen. Can I help? And they try to pour the flour in and they pour too much. And you're like, shit, now we're having like 15 pancakes instead of five. Fine. <laughs> you know? So there's this, possibly this energy coming from a child where you see that they have this energy in them to help. And you want to, or... Not based on, you know, the child saying, let me help you. You're like, oh, yes, we have to put you into a good school. It's not that they're showing signs. It's more of like a, you see that this child is innocent, really. You know, and they deserve the best shot that they need, that they can get in this life. So we have to move. Or my kid or whoever, my, my, my grandson, whoever this is, deserves this and that. Or I want to give them this and that. So I'm going to take on a second job or instead of, you know, putting money towards buying, you know, maybe you're, like I said, a grandparent and maybe you've been like wanting this car. You're like, I'm, I'm done with the SUV. I'm done with the minivan. The kids are out of the house. Let's, let's, let's go ahead and get that sports car, babe, you and your husband or you and your wife. But then you see your grandchild and you're like, oh my God, they're smart. 
they're so caring, they're, they're, they're affectionate, they're nurturing. We got to do something for them. So maybe you enlist your grandchild in like a summer program, you know, for like for STEM. Like they're really great with numbers. They love to build things all the time. They love those like Lego sets with like the moving parts. It's like we got to get them in, in the program. So you put off indulging in your own wants and needs and desires, you know, that lovely sports car. And you put money towards sending your grandson off to a camp or your grand granddaughter. It doesn't matter. There's no gender. So there's this emphasis for some of you out here that we have to prioritize the child. Now, and it doesn't matter the age, but there's also that element there too where new normals, right? With this world and ten of pentacles, new foundations being laid. Okay, so now here comes this young energy. Pages are young, not necessarily in age, but they are young in energy. So again, this could fall into the person who's recently come out as gay or trans or anything like that where this is now a new experience for them, for the entire family. Let's welcome them with open arms. Let's nurture them. Let's protect them. Let's make sure that they're taken care of. In some cases, and, and this is a very sad and harsh reality for many people, they have been kicked out of or rejected from their family. They're not even your blood relative, this person, maybe. They're a good friend of yours. They're, you know, a college roommate. You know, your your kid goes off to college, their college roommate can't go home over the summer because their parents rejected them when they came out. So then you welcome them into your family. Does that make sense? So there's this, as much as this page is being represented as the, the, as the object, for lack of a better word, the object that needs protection, that needs nurturing, you're also enacting that same energy within yourself, Libra. I hope you understand what I'm saying here. Because uh, the pages, they, like I said, this page is watering the plant. The child, the young energy, is wanting to give of themselves, to give love, to give nurturing energy towards other people. This is probably a sensitive person, right? And so seeing that vulnerability within this person, regardless of their age or gender, or any situation like that, it's just the energy they carry. That vulnerability makes you want to shelter them more. They're vulnerable. They need to be protected. So as much as they're exhibiting this nurturing energy out to other people, you exhibit it to them. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. <laughs> so that's great. Person, it could be more than one kid. But it, and it doesn't have to be a child, you know, like I said, it doesn't have to be a, like a little kid. It doesn't even have to be a young person. It could be somebody, like I said, in their 30s or their, or their 20s or even in their 40s who's embarking on something new for the first time, moving to a whole new loca location in the country. You could live in, in the backwoods of Louisiana and your son or daughter or your, your, your niece or nephew says, okay, we're, we're moving up to New Jersey. We're moving up to New York. We're moving out to LA and you're like, what? You're going where? Sorry, no, no offense to anybody with my very bad Southern accent, but so you would still want to nurture someone as they're, in, as they're embarking on a new journey. Okay. Knight of Pentacles. Yes. Yeah. So possibly another quote unquote child or young energy, but I'm not really feeling this as a separate person. It could be, but Knight of Pentacles would show you know, that long-term investment, that long-term goal, you know, and that kind of makes sense where we're talking about the new paradigms and the new foundations that are being established with the world and the Ten of Pentacles. The Knight of Pentacles, energetically, whoever possesses this, would want to see success. You know, the Knight of Pentacles <laughs> does not get involved in any endeavor that's not going to show some type of fruit or some type of benefit or some type of... Uh, uh, profit, for lack of a better word, because it doesn't have to be monetary, of course. Profits don't have, well, I guess profits do, but uh, outcomes of a good type, of a, of a positive type, do not always have to be monetary. There we go. And this person, whoever they are, could be you, could be the Page of Cups themselves, but they're interested in long-term gains, long-term stability, long-term safety and security. Now, 
being that it's right next to that page of cups that could be what the page of cups needs the page of cups needs dependability needs structure needs foundation needs safety security financially within their body okay because pentacles can talk about your physical health and your physical well-being talks about your home talks about your job talks about all that kind of stuff so this page of cups is in need of this now with your help or with whatever's going on with the world and the ten of pentacles together libra that's pretty much in the bank pretty much assured i mean obviously like i said life comes in cycles life comes in waves you know we can't avoid all obstacles we can't avoid all hiccups we can't avoid all adversity but being that there's just like this lovely encompassed energy of positivity and progression and safety security love affection earnest connection here i feel that it's pretty much solid that this page of cups whoever whatever it is is on the right track will be supported and that's the thing about the knight of pentacles also offers support you know he's the slowest moving knight so if you think about you know any old movies or any <laughs> if, you, if you think about anything from medieval times knights they travel long distances on horseback they go from villages to shires and all this kind of stuff they're busy people this guy's slow right so as he journeys on he's able to take in the details he takes his time he stops and smells the roses he stops and stays over a day two days three days in a village when really the other knights are only there for like you know six hours all right guys i gotta go i got somewhere i need to be and they gallop out of town or they gallop out of the village this guy shows up hey guys you know starts taking off his robes and taking off his armor and his boots and he's like oh man you guys have a lovely village here this is great so does anybody want to show me around and he gets to know people so this energy is slow methodical takes its time gets comfortable gets familiar and is very dependable so that when he comes back through when he returns on his on his uh, round trip right going back towards the castle or back towards wherever he came from they're not going to look at him like oh you came here like two weeks ago we don't really remember you like knight of swords or knight of wands would be that guy like uh what was your name again this guy oh hey knight of pentacles oh, it's so good to see you oh wow we missed you oh those three days that you spent in our town that was so great and da 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 da, da. so there's like a dependability of trust it's a really effusive in a in a non-romantic way but it is very effusive it's very loving the energy that the knight of pentacles can bring sometimes yeah this is a great reading there's more than just you here libra you'll know your life better than i do where you fit in here i definitely know you're here in that king of swords energy you could be the page of cups you could be the knight of pentacles you could be anywhere else but i really feel you're centrally there in the king of swords but overall this is a freaking amazing reading very very lovey dovey very mm, like i feel a cocooning kind of feeling cocoon i don't know why i said it, cocooned but i do i feel like enraptured or like bundled up in like a snuggie i feel very at home in this energy that's going on here now your outcome for july interestingly is the four of cups so four of cups is traditionally giving us the feeling or, or gives us the interpretation that something is offered to us possibly from the universe possibly from someone in our lives and it's ultimately rejected or ultimately seen as like eh, i don't really want that that's not exactly what I ordered. So that is there a little bit for you. This It's not exactly what I ordered. It's not exactly what I expected. It's not exactly what I think I need or I want right now. I do get that feeling. Now, how that could filter back into what you're experiencing. I think this is like that recalibration period, that stumbling block period where we're going to get used to this new normal. And there's going to be moments where you're thinking, ah, did I do the right thing? Or someone else around you is thinking, ah, am I doing the right thing? Should I have spent my money here? Should I have said this to that person? Should I have gone there on that day at that time and done X, Y, Z? There's not going to regret thing necessarily, or maybe for a second, maybe a little bit of regret for some, but it's ultimately this mm, moment of doubt, 
moment of, of, of uncertainty where we can't be sure, we're not seeing clearly that the path that we're on, that the things that we're choosing to do and say are actually the correct things to do and say, okay? And I can understand that because I, as, as some of you guys will know, I talked a lot about kids today. I don't resonate with children. Sorry. Ironically, I'm a Leo, house of children. Me and kids, mm, we have a distant relationship. Like how I keep doing this, like keep them over there. <laughs> I like them from afar. I think they're interesting little people. But ultimately, kids and I don't really vibe. And so I'm thinking like maybe that's it. Because some of you are dealing with children, I'm getting that feeling of, ah, how can I be sure I didn't just mess this child up for the rest of their lives? You know? Maybe with the Four of Cups, maybe this is for those who want to provide for the child, but you maybe you can't, or what you've given to them, given them a home to stay in, in, in the case of those that have been kicked out from their own homes, or have been disowned by their own families, or disowned within your own bloodline, and then you take in, let's say you take in your sister's kid, or your brother's kid, or whoever. It's like, ah, should I have done that? Because now my sister... And I are going to have a problem because I did the right thing in protecting this child and making sure that they weren't sleeping on the streets or sleeping at friends' houses or sleeping in the home of people that they don't know and that they can't trust, you know? And so now your sister or your brother, whoever comes to you and says, what the fuck do you think you're doing? Taking in my kid. And you're like, ah, here's that argument that I didn't want to have. It's being thrust in my face. And you feel like, ah, eh, maybe I shouldn't have done this in the first place. So in that specific case, where you know you are doing the right thing, right? You're stepping into a role that other people don't want to step into. You're helping someone along their path, along their journey that needs that helping hand, okay? Do not shy away from, or rather don't allow yourself to be, like have this guilt, this big tall glass of guilt and, 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 and arguments and all this kind of blowback just being shoved in your face. You're allowed to say no to that. You're like, nah, I don't want to get involved in that. You see what I mean? But regardless of how this plays out to you, the Four of Cups is, it's there in some cases and it's adversarial. It's like not what you want. You know what I mean? Like those other three <laughs> cups are, her glasses are empty. This is the fourth one. Let's be under the assumption that she consumed those three glasses and someone's like, here, have another one. So it's like someone's trying to pile something else onto your plate or give you more of something that you don't need any more of. Could be guilt or grief. Could be some type of, uh, you know, like back talk. Something like that. Anything else with this? Some of you, you could be the Uncle Louie, if, if you recall what we were talking about. And, and I'm not trying to call anybody out here because we all have our own journeys. We all have our own paths. So this could be you looking at all of the changes that are going on within your family dynamic. And you're just like, I don't know if I can get on board with this. I don't know where I fit in, possibly, with this new dynamic. If you are the Uncle Louie, you're going to feel like you're on the outs. I don't know where my place is in this family anymore. Or uh, another way that you could think of this is you could be that person who did come out and you're debuting yourself as whomever you are, right, to your family. You're coming out to them in whatever way that means. And like I said, you're coming back into this, this dynamic and you're like, I don't know where I stand with everybody. So you're apprehensive. You know, the Four of Cups can show disinterest, but it can also show apprehension. Like, she looks legit shocked. Like, oh, what am I going to do with this fourth glass? Ah, you know, she looks really like, I don't know. I don't know about this, right? So that's also a possibility for some of you. Overall energy for July for you, Libra, seven of pentacles. So that's basically what we've been talking about this whole time evaluations, looking at the structure of things, since we're talking about pentacles, the structure, the foundation, what we, what we know historically, what we know generationally as fact, as, 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 as 
what we basically can take for granted, what we know of as being quote unquote normal within this dynamic. And we look it over and we say, what's good, what's not good? Good in terms of like ripeness, good in terms of like, as you can see, walking a garden path. And if we see weeds, we take them out. If we see that a plant needs watering, we water it. If we see that uh, uh, one of the fruit pentacles there on that bush needs to be plucked down because it's ripe and it's ready to go, then we pluck it and we eat it or we chop it up into a fruit salad and do whatever with it. That's the evaluation. That's what you're doing this for this entire reading, for this entire situation is let's get shit straight. Let's get everything looking and feeling as if it belongs here in this garden. So that can sometimes have a harsh overtone to it. You know, what belongs in the garden, what doesn't, you know, I don't necessarily feel you or anyone else. Although I guess if people have been disowned and kicked out, I guess that is there. But from your standpoint, Libra, for most of you, I don't feel that you're doing the cutting out of things. Like I said, down here with that King of Swords, you're really being like the diplomat of the situation. You're you're being the 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 sheriff, you know, you're kind of making sure everybody stays in line and nobody gets too uncomfortable here, but you're ultimately not here to pass judgment. You know, everybody just be decent to one another and we'll be, everybody just respect one another and everything's going to be fine. And that to me is kind of indicated there with that seven of pentacles is if you're a good flower, you take the water, you take in the sunlight, you grow amongst all the other flowers in the garden, it's cool. If you start sprouting weeds, if you start wilting, if you, you know, do whatever, then you're going to be removed from the garden. And it's not like in a nasty way that I feel that that removed from the garden or removed from whatever is nasty because the goal of the garden, the goal of this walk through the, the pentacles garden is to make it beautiful. So if Uncle Louie or anybody else doesn't want to be a part of that, they don't have to be. If Libra, if you don't want to be a part of that, if you are Uncle Louie and you're like, I don't know about all this hippy dippy stuff and everybody just wants to <laughs> accept that my grandson or my grandchild is this and that, whatever your bag is, man, there's a new normal, a new foundation being set upon and people for the most part are going along with the program. You don't have to be a part of it if you don't want to. And if other people are showing that they don't want to be a part of the program, let them go. Or remove them. If your sister has a problem with you taking in her kids, or whoever has a problem with you lending a helping hand to someone else who needs it, and they want to criticize you for it, they want to give you backlash for it, they can go away. Okay? Build your beautiful Pentacles Garden, Libra. That's it. <laughs> Libra, that is your reading for July. If you liked it, there's a like button down below. Go ahead and hit that for me. You can also leave comments down below letting me know what resonated here for you today. I'd love to read that stuff if you guys want to share it, okay? Uh, you can also share this video across your social media platforms. Let other people know that you're watching this pretty okay, but ultimately kind of chill. <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> however you would want to describe me. If you want to tell other people what you're watching here on YouTube and that you like my channel, feel free to share this across your own YouTube page, your social media pages, all that good stuff. And of course, if you are not subscribed, but you think you might want to subscribe, maybe it's your first time here, maybe this is your seventh time here, I don't know, go ahead and hit that button for me as well. Doing any and all of those things lets YouTube and me know that you're having a good time around here, and it helps the channel grow and move towards future goals. And I absolutely have enjoyed the supports thus far, and I'm kind of greedy, and I want more. <laughs> so if you want to help me with that, that's cool. All right, uh, Libra, I'll be back in about two weeks with the mid-Julys. They will be coming. I know I didn't do the mid-Junes. I needed to apologize. I forgot to apologize at the top. So I'm sorry if you were looking forward to that. But a chick got busy. A chick got really bogged down at work. So I just, I, I did not have the time nor the energy to do them. But I will do them for July. And then after that, I'll be back for August uh, with your monthlies, okay? All right, Libra. I thank you so, 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 so much for watching this video. Thanks a lot, guys. Take care. Bye.